Come on, bucket. In the past 30 years, fires have become much more prevalent. And it's due in part to mankind's stopping fires for a long, long time and not realizing that that wasn't really the best route. The forests are basically under attack all the time. I'm at the top. It's a bad cone right there. Get that out of here. It's a nice view from up here. My name is Robert Beauchamp, and I am the owner of Sierra Cone. So I climb for quite a few of the national forests in California. I climb for a Cal Fire. I started my business about 30 years ago when a friend of mine asked me if I wanted to come out and make some good money. He said, you can make $300 a day. So I said, sure, what do I need to do? He said, meet me out on the coast. He gave me a harness and a flip rope and a rope. And we went up a tree together and he showed me how to collect sugar pine trees. I've been doing it for 30 years. Oh, these cones are looking pretty good. Some bugs. The creek fire, I think it was went through a lot of country that I picked trees in, right? So all these trees that I've collected and know are now dead. The droughts we've had, you know, the climate's getting hotter, all that stuff matters. The trees for the last few years at least have not been producing as many cones as they normally would. So now we're behind the eight ball. That to me is kind of the scariest thing the red fur flakes apart like cornflakes. This is a quite nice cone, has good shape, no bugs in it. A cone like this will fall apart within a day or two and the seed will disperse throughout the forest. When they fall, they, they spin around and they, they set sail. the number of area burn has been increasing when you consider total deforested areas for federal lands in California. The total in one year, 2020, was equivalent to about the 11 previous years. A lot of these fires, they're burning really hot, right? They're creating major scars. We need to come in and start introducing some pioneer species, species that can speed up the process of restoring the habitat. My job is to identify which sources will be more resilient to climate change. Over the past several decades, you know, the mortality for sugar pine trees has been increasing, partially due to wildfires. So these seedlings are sugar pine seedlings, and we are producing them for the Klamath National Forest. We're all trying to work together to acquire this seed because that's where it starts. So the ones that fall completely down uh, are the heaviest, uh, which implies that they are, the, are filled seed, viable seed. My name is Jessica Huang. I am the state seed bank manager. We collect seeds for long-term storage and for seedling growth. 
is the seed bank. This is a zero degree Fahrenheit freezer that is on 24 seven. It is really cold. There is about 42,000 pounds of seed in here. Pines with a harder coat, like ponderosa pine, sugar pine, they can last 10, 15 years. We have seed, we have ponderosa pine seeds that are 30 years that are still doing well. It is especially important right now because more and more of these areas are being burnt at a really, really rapid rate. Most trees in California are fire adapted and they can take a certain amount of heat. But when it's so intense and so hot that it completely kills the tree, there's no more cones from that tree. We can't catch up to the demand. Every year, we see what cone crops are out throughout the state of California. We try to get out there, collect all the cones, try to extract the seed and prepare the seed for long-term storage for future reforestation needs. Once we have a crop, a big challenge is getting climbers out there. When cone season is also the same time as fire season, our resources get spread very thin. I was born and raised in Brazil. I grew up seeing my dad producing natives. He was a conservationist in heart. Every time I drove to a scar of a fire, it just made me so sad. But here's the thing. I saw the importance of what I was doing. At the Placerville Nursery, the process of seedling, lift, and pack allows us to select the best plants to be shipped out to the different national forests and other partners. If no one was replanting and, you know, we still continued to have these wildfires and reforestation was not a priority, you probably have a lot less conifers and a lot more brush species start to come up. So our landscape will just really be literally a lot less trees. When you have a lot of trees, it's a good carbon storage, right? And we want that carbon storage. So when we reforest and plant more trees, it serves as the next generation of replacement to sequester that carbon again. Planting trees will help us store carbon and reduce the effects of climate change. We have this ecosystem that needs to be restored. And just sitting and not doing anything, it's not gonna help. It normally takes around 15 to 30 years, depending on the location, for us to be able to see the burn scar covered with trees and understory vegetation. We have to plant species and populations that are better adapted to a future climate. If we don't, you may never have a forest back. This is a ponderosa pine that was planted, I would say, three to four years ago. This one looks pretty nice. It's very strong. 